second. I, I now recognize Representative Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania, who's the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Europe, Energy, and the Environment uh, and Cyber for five minutes. Mr. Secretary, just to get to the core of what your philosophy is on national and international security, uh, sir, do you believe in the maxim and the precept of uh, uh, the stronger that we uh, uh, exert ourselves overseas, the safer we are here uh, in America, i.e. peace through strength? I believe, first, the stronger we are at home, the stronger we're going to be overseas, and that requires uh, unity. Uh, it requires coming together. It requires making investments in ourselves. Uh, and I hope we can see those forward to, together. Uh, second, uh, to your point around the world, it requires absolutely having the strongest military and defense uh, in the world, but it also requires using all the tools at our disposal uh, to include our diplomacy, to include our economic uh, tools, to include uh, political tools, cultural tools. Uh, all of that uh, is in the mix, and all of that uh, defines our strength in the world. Mr. Secretary, do you believe that what the world witnessed over the past several weeks in Afghanistan was American strength? I believe that what the world witnessed was um, the president uh, ending a war that had gone on for 20 years. But did they witness American uh, strength sure over the past few weeks? And they witnessed uh, an extraordinary effort that no other country could or would have made under the most extreme conditions in bringing 125,000 people uh, out to safety. Uh, in making sure that we stood by our allies and partners and helping them uh, to get out as well. Uh, and things we've heard from allies and partners around the world is no other country could or would have done what we did. Mr. Secretary, I recently left Ukraine just a few days ago. I returned. Uh, my next step. Just hold off one second. We're having technical problems. I don't see the secretary that's on, uh, and we should be able to see him visually. Uh, and I want to make sure you get all of the time to ask the questions that you are putting forward in his response. Mr. Cha Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? We hear you, Mr. Secretary, but we don't see you. Yeah, it looks like the image is frozen here, so let's see if we can. Yeah, let's see if we can fix that. The technical staff is working on it. I want to make sure Mr. Fitzgerald gets the all of the time. Mr. Fitzpatrick, what did I say? Mr. Fitzpatrick. How's that, Mr. Chairman? OK, I don't have a visual okay. of the secretary. Now, OK. Can I Mr. get my time to claim, sir? It's Yes, let's give Mr. Fitzpatrick his, how much time when I stopped him? It should be four, four minutes and 10 seconds. No, when I stopped, I, I continued the questions that you had asked, but when I stopped, four minutes? Okay, it's fine. we can resume from Mr. There. Secretary, I just returned from Ukraine two days ago. My next stop will be Taiwan. Yes. Sir, these people are scared to death. They're scared to death. So. Can we get you on the record here today, sir, to tell this committee, this Congress, and our nation that we will unequivocally and unapologetically do whatever it takes, whatever it takes, to have the backs of our friends in Ukraine and our friends in Taiwan, our friends in Ukraine in the event of Russian aggression, our friends in Taiwan in the event of Chinese aggression? Absolutely. We stand by our commitments to both countries. And we will do whatever it takes to defend them. We will stand by our commitments. Uh, we will stand involve, by our commitments to Taiwan whatever, under, the, under does, the Taiwan Relations Act. Uh, we'll stand by the commitments we have to Ukraine, including, by the way, uh, commitments that uh, uh, President and President Zelensky uh, discussed and put out uh, just uh, about a week, maybe two weeks ago. Sir, I can tell you, I just left there. They are scared to death, and they, they question the commitment of this country. So I, I will take you at your word that we will do whatever it takes to defend Taiwan and Ukraine. Next question. Uh, not talking about the, uh, the arms and munitions. I'm talking about the heavy equipment, the, the tanks, the, the Humvees, the Black Hawk helicopters, the aircraft. Sir, all this is GPS tracked. We can identify this, where it's at. Why did we not destroy it, or don't we destroy it now? Uh, thank you. Um, so let me, uh, let me say this. I know my colleagues from the uh, Defense Department, uh, the Joint Chiefs, et cetera, uh, will have an opportunity to, uh, to speak to, to you, to speak to Congress in the weeks ahead. They're the experts on this. Um, about oh, since 2004, roughly, uh, something like $80 billion in defense articles was provided to Afghanistan. So that goes back over the last roughly Sir, I, sir, I'm, sorry, I'm only asking you about the GPS tracking. We know the location of this equipment that we have now mm -hmm. seen fall into the hands of terrorists. Are we going to destroy it or not? So much of this, uh, much of this equipment is either inoperable or will soon be inoperable uh, because it can't be maintained. Uh, sir, as I've sir, seen sir, it, it, based it, on what I've heard from my colleagues, there is nothing of strategic value that is that would threaten us or threaten Afghanistan's neighbors. Having said that, 
I am not uh, the expert on this, and I would really defer to my colleagues at the Pentagon. Mr. Secretary, do you believe that America should ever in any way capitulate to terrorists? Absolutely not. Do you believe, sir, that uh, allowing the Taliban to run perimeter, Hakaya, with American troops on the inside of that perimeter, relying on the Taliban to keep ISIS out, and American citizens, passport holders, on the outside of the perimeter, relying on the Taliban to get in, that that is capitulating to terrorists? The reality is that the government and Afghan national security forces collapsed. Uh, the reality is that the Taliban uh, took over Kabul, uh, as well as much of the country. <clears throat> that was the reality we were dealing with. And the judgment uh, of all of us, uh, starting with our military commanders, including the people on the ground, uh, was that uh, our job was to work to get as many people out as possible, American citizens, uh, Afghans at risk, and because the Taliban controlled the city, uh, that required some coordination with them to get people through and to the airport. Sir, to a, an 18-year-old Afghani girl who may be watching this hearing today, uh, who was born after 9-11, who knows nothing of what it's like to live under Taliban rule, who had hopes and dreams, who's in school, who wanted to be a female journalist to help women and, and young girls rise up in Afghanistan, who now feels betrayed by the actions of this administration, what is your message to her? I spoke to uh, uh, a number of uh, uh, young uh, Afghan uh, women, including uh, 18, 19, 21-year-olds, uh, just about uh, a week ago uh, in Doha, uh, actually in, in Ramstein, Germany, Do you where their lives are many at risk right now? relocated. And we talked about their futures. We talked about the futures of Afghan women and girls Under uh, the who Taliban? Are in Afghanistan. Under the Taliban. Uh, and we talked about the ongoing commitment that the United States has and countries around the world have to do everything we can to support those women and girls going forward. Gentlemen, time has expired.